Ontario has some of the best freshwater cruising in the world, and when most people hear that, they think of the Great Lakes and some of the other major waterways. Because of that, those places get pretty busy with boaters. But there's a lesser known lake smack dab on the border of Quebec and Ontario that offers something completely different without sacrificing all the key amenities like marinas, great accommodations, and excellent restaurants around the way. Welcome to Lake Temiskaming. Whenever I get this close to La Belle Provence, the only things on my mind are cheese curds, gravy, and french fries. And I know from a lot of experience that you can get some pretty good poutine in eastern and northern Ontario. But I've come all the way up here to answer the age-old question of who has the better poutine, Ontario or Quebec? Trace the Ottawa River north past Mattawa, and a dam at the town of Temiskaming, Quebec, marks the southern tip of Lake Temiskaming, a widening of the river little more than five miles across at its widest point. Lake Temiskaming straddles the provincial border for 68 miles, over 100 kilometers, and at its most northwestern point, we find the town of New Liskard in the community of Temiskaming Shores, my home port for this poutini pursuit. The New Liskard Waterfront Marina has 75 slips for permanent and transient boaters with gas and pump out services and a free launch ramp. That's where I'll park my ride for the trip. Courtesy of our friends at Gordon Bay Marine, it's a 2021 Bayliner DX2000 outboard that will henceforth be known as the gravy boat. I know deck boats aren't necessarily the best looking boats on the water, but they are some of the most practical with a spaciousness of a pontoon and more of the feel of a fiberglass boat. What I do really like is that Bayliner has done a pretty good job of making nice sleek lines to give this a little sportier look than your typical deck boat. With a moderate V hull, this thing planes nice and easy. A little bit of bow rise and it's right up on plane in just a few seconds. There's a little bit of patter in rough water, but otherwise this thing rides pretty nice. And the big squared off bow and windshield are great for keeping you high and dry in a little bit of chop. The DX2000 is rated for up to 180 horsepower. Mine has a tried, tested, and true Mercury four-stroke 150 hanging off the back, which will be great for getting up and down this long body of water. If I had friends, this would be an excellent setup. The squared off bow gives plenty of room for seating up front with storage under each cushion and a reboarding ladder on the nose, which is covered in non-skid. There's a huge ski locker in the floor between the consoles, plus a sizable dry compartment in front of the co-captain and an open tray on the top. Wraparound L-shaped seating in the cockpit hides compartments under each seat, the aft one being a self-draining live well, and a flip-up cushion on the port side shows a good space for a cooler to sit. There's also a removable backrest that can be placed in a couple different spots to create a spotter's chair for skiers or tubers. A stern walkthrough has another big storage compartment in the floor right next to a beautiful big sun pad with a sticky pad for valuables and a tilting backrest. And with outboard power, you get the added bonus of the cavernous storage compartment underneath. You do lose a bit on the swim platform, but our gravy boat still has a pair of good-sized platforms with a telescoping ladder to starboard. The helm features a bolstered bucket seat and well-laid-out gauges, and just in front of it, a pouch with USB power to hold and charge your phone. An armrest would be nice for the long ride, but I'll suck it up. Eyes on the prize. Just steps from the waterfront marina is the Waterfront Inn, a small hotel on the beach looking right down the length of Lake Temiskaming. A great place to stay the night if you aren't sleeping aboard. And this is Ms. Claybell, a giant Holstein cow who grazes here on the side of Highway 11 to greet anybody driving into Temiskaming Shores. She's a symbol of the importance of agriculture in this region of the province and an utterly excellent ambassador for the region. A little further up the road is another landmark and further evidence of that agricultural heritage. We've been making cheese in this area since 1940. All the milk comes from our farmers here in this local Temiskaming region, about a 20 kilometer radius, and all our cheese is made by hand. We make everything from fresh curds and cheddar blocks to artisanal style cheeses such as blues, breeze. Up here in Northern Ontario, they know a thing or two about poutine, so I had to ask Lace, what makes a good curd for the classic French Canadian dish? It has to be squeaky. You don't want it to completely melt in your poutine with the hot gravy, but it's gotta be warm, soft, and squeak, for sure. <laughs> Definitely check out 28 on the Lake. They have a great patio, and they make a poutine with Thornlow cheese curds. Hey, what do you know? That's right in my hotel. One poutine to go, please. There's nothing much more Canadian than a good poutine. And despite what they may think on this shore, on that shore is the place where this great dish was invented. 
So I've gassed up this brand new DX2000, and I'm headed into La Belle Provence to find out once and for all who makes the best bouteille, Ontario or Quebec. Welcome back to Lake Temiskaming in Northern Ontario. This natural border which separates Ontario from Quebec is our playground today as we seek to answer the age old question, who has the better poutine, Ontario or Quebec? We started our quest for the best in New Liskard on the northwest tip of Temiskaming Shores. From there, we headed down the lake towards our most southern destination in Quebec, La Bannock, a local waterfront restaurant which apparently has authentic Quebec poutine. Quoting the shoulder season is great because you often have the lake all to yourself, but you do have to take what you can get weather-wise, especially way up here in northern Ontario. We're getting a little bit of rain today, but we got a big bimini, and I came up here to boat on Lake Temiskaming and eat some poutine. And I got a full tank of gas and an empty stomach. So we're pushing up. The rain did slow us down, but it gave us a chance to visit a few more waterfront destinations along the way. Heading south, we stopped in Haleybury on the western side of Lake Temiskaming in Ontario. This is Haleybury, one of the few towns that makes up Temiskaming Shores where you can stop in, get some gas, get a pump out, take a shower, or, like we're doing, wait for a little bit of rain to pass over, walk into town, have a bite to eat. The upside about boating late in the season is the peace and quiet. The downside is the peace and quiet, because many tourist-based destinations are closed for the season. Not a big deal for us, though, as our poutine mission was pretty straightforward. While waiting for the rain to subside, we stumbled upon a sign which piqued my interest. As it turns out, Haleybury was home to writer Charles Leslie McFarlane, who penned many of the early Hardy Boys novels under the alias Franklin W. Dixon. He would later return to the Great White North to continue writing under his own name. Novels such as A Kid of Haleybury and an autobiography, The Ghost of the Hardy Boys, helped put this little town on the map. Haleybury was also met with tragedy, as the Great Fire of 1922 destroyed over 90% of the town, killing 11 residents, leaving 3,500 people homeless. It's been called one of the 10 worst natural disasters in Canadian history. The rain was beginning to let up, so we headed back out on the water. Due south of Haleybury are the massive cliffs of Devil's Rock. This is incredible, though. You're not going to catch me going into one of those tunnels. Pretty impressive. We decided to push on, but planned to return to Devil's Rock on our return trip. For now, we continued southwest towards La Belle Provence. Once we passed the Narrows on the south end of the lake, a slight turn east landed us on the shores of Quebec. It's here where we would find out once and for all who has the best poutine. La Bannock is a small resort with cottage rentals and a restaurant just steps away from a sandy shoreline. It's here where we would fulfill our challenge. Since 1968, La Bannock has sat here overlooking the south basin of Lake Temiskaming, and it is a beautiful view. You know, poutine was invented in Quebec, maybe perfected by Ontarians, I don't know. All I know is I think this is how it was meant to be eaten, overlooking the beautiful south basin of Lake Temiskaming, Ontario on one side, Quebec on the other, and a beautiful bowl of cheesy goodness right in the middle. Oh, look at that. Mm. Quebec, I think you still own the poutine. With our bellies now full of Quebec's finest, we began a leisurely cruise back north towards New Liskard. Needing to burn a few calories, we stopped in to hike Devil's Rock for a bird's eye view of Lake Temiskaming. There are docks at Buck Park Campground, which is where the trailhead begins our ascent. The natural rock formation is called Devil's Rock. It uh, descends under the water by 800 feet, but it also goes up over top of the water by at least 800 feet. And it's one of the most spectacular views in Northern Ontario that you'd find. The trail to it has been used for close to a thousand years or more by the indigenous population of the area. The view is worth 45 minute walk, no problem. <laughs> The hike started out a little wet, but it felt good to be burning off some of that top quality poutine. While the weather has not been cooperative on this trip, we have to take the good with the bad. Not sure if this is the food talking or not, but the hike has slowed me down enough to reflect on our little adventure. Doesn't matter what kind of boat you have, as long as you're boating. It's simply a vessel to help transport us from one place to another. How you get there is up to you. In our case, that little Bayliner DX2000 has helped open my eyes to what Northern Ontario has to offer. 
I can honestly say I have never been this close to cliffs that large before. Our cameras do this no justice. This area truly is spectacular and should be on any boater's bucket list. This is insane.